flavor, ice cream flavors. step was kind of just learning code and like learning how things worked and that happened much more like later but I always like did design documents even as a kid of like five and six in video games and like drew little levels out and stuff like that. Okay so I'm working on a game called Full Metal God which is like a sword fighting game. As a little kid I play a lot a game called Hexen a lot. Hexen is a sword fighting game. It was all about timing, cooldown and warm up times for sword fighting. I don't know, I just think sword fighting is like one of the coolest things ever. Definitely, that's happened in human history, just forever, and I wanted to gamify it. You wanted to gamify it? Yeah, that's a real term, gamify. I have Pogs here from a game called Brita Galaxy. Look it up on Steam, very good game. My friends made it. Um, this is Ukrainian Tankers, Lapel, Lapet. Toys, just from my youth that I never got rid of because they're too cool. Video games, computer, setup. If you guys ever wonder what a MacBook looks like. Oh, okay. What happened to your laptop? Um, it's just old. This is from 2011. It's lots of dents. My drawing thing. This is from a comic I made when I was in high school. Um, let's see. Boom. There's a lot of crazy stuff. This. What's that? This is an airsoft gun. It's not real. Romans. This is my Roman section. I like history a ton. Uh, I either sleep or play video games or work on my game. And so, uh, as of recent, I just moved my bed over here because when I'm not working or at a friend's house, I'm here. Could you describe the art and the stylistic choices in the game? Yeah, I wanted to harken back to a time when adventure games were like the main market. Uh, in the early 90s, Nintendo released a game called uh, Link to the Past, which was a Zelda game. And it had some really, really amazing art. And as a kid, I really, I loved it. I was just, ins it was insane. It like was mind blowing, basically. So I wanted to make a game that kind of has that same style to it. My main influence would be like, um, a lot of designers of Nintendo, H.P. Lovecraft, Junji Ito, um, people like that. Everything should look like it exists in the same world and space. And I think, you know, developing a strong aesthetic for any, anything, it needs to be there. Otherwise, you run the risk of having a fractured looking project, whatever it is, or a fractured feeling project. It's so the game art is pixel art. So um, what's, what's pixel art? Pixel art is where you, it's the oldest type of video game art, basically, which is just colored pixels, pic like little, little cells, digital cells, um, where that's all you had. And the game is kind of like a low, it's what's called lo-fi, which is where the pixels are kind of large in comparison to a lot of other, like Final Fantasy is a very not lo-fi game. This is a little animation, and again I can't zoom in on it, but it's just the guy's head getting cut off, and then him being bummed out. Here's some other game art for Full Metal God, which is, that's you. Um, this is a enemy knight, it's another enemy knight, and that's a spooky monster you will probably have to kill. Or befriend. Um, that is a map of a level that I'm working on. Yeah, so you start here. There's always like different areas. This is in like a, a spooky crypt level. Um, all these little points are junctions where these little eye monsters can look at you and try to grab you and pull you into the darkness. Um, and depending on where you go, you end up in different cities. So depending on where you go, you can start off in different areas and change the story a little bit. We'll constantly, we can constantly like update it and put patches in and just keep on putting new stuff in. What's cool about digital distribution of, of like games and th uh, services like Steam is like this. You can just like have a patch that says, hey, there's new content. The player will can download it and then the game just has more stuff in it automatically. I don't have to sell them a whole new thing or anything mm -hmm. like that um, at all. Digital distrib distribution through Steam and things like that 
I've kind of changed it and made it so that I can do what I want to do. Let's go through my library. There is Mountain Blade, which is really good. Risk of Rain, that was made by my friend. Uh, Toki Tori, which is cool. Xenoraptor was made by my friend. You should buy it. Probably Miami. I had lunch with the people who made this game. They're very nice people. It's a good game. It's the, the sequel has just come out, so pick it up. Fez, pretty interesting. You can kind of, if you read about Fez, you can kind of learn some of the controversies that are involved in game development and indie development. There's actually a nice documentary on it. Actually, on the creator, who I have shaken hands with, but had to not talk to, unfortunately. He's kind of a goofball, and I kind of hate him. So, we've been working on it for a long time, but for probably about a year, it, it's gone through different phases. The game's been very different. It started off as being like a 2D game that had a totally different story that was set completely underwater, but it's since kind of changed. It, it's nice that we have like a slow development on that. It's weird because my programmer. It, he lives in Croatia, so he has a, a totally different schedule than me. Basically, when I wake up, I have a few hours before he goes to bed. There was a time when I was living on Croatian time, just so we could communicate a lot better. It didn't really work out because I was like doing other stuff as well, or trying to. What would that schedule do to you? I basically, it wasn't that bad. I would wake up at about, what would be here, so yeah, 3 in the morning around here, a little earlier sometimes, but 3 to 4 in the morning, and then I would go to bed at around noon to two. Who is the programmer in Croatia who's working on this? His name is Lovro Greek. I'm not pronouncing his last name, I was going to say it. <laughs> Greek. It's, it's spelled weird. Jeff Force Gemini is one of the best games of all time. And it inspired me a ton. Um, it inspired me because it has such a consistent design philosophy all throughout and made me kind of think, oh, that's what that is. This is just. HP Lovecraft's complete works. Um, give it a read. If you can, not the complete, I mean, you don't have to read it, the entire thing, but give it a couple of other stories to read. Any, like, top suggestions? Yeah, Polaris. Color out of space. And then all the rest. Don't take any, <laughs> just read it all. Racist guy, not a nice dude. He kind of comes out of that in his later writings, and it's just kind of interesting to see this kind of tormented, hate filled dude transition out of that mindset into kind of a more accepting, but still just as bitter, alternative mindset. And, you know, if you have someone that hateful and that just filled with fear, he's going to write some good horror. So, yeah, there you go. What do your parents think about your game? What you're doing? Um, they like it. I mean, they're, they don't think I can, they, they don't think I can make a, a life out of it, but I'll prove them wrong. <laughs> yeah. So for anyone interested in developing their own games, uh, what kind of resources are available to them? Tons. Tons. Of advice though, if you want to get into games, don't take shortcuts. And also, don't think in a mindset of what's going to be easiest when it comes to code. Because a lot of people, not a lot of people, but some people have messaged me in the past thinking that there's some kind of trick to get around the whole, I have to program, I have to learn code. There isn't a trick. Well, there are tricks. You could do that, but the game's probably going to look bad and it's probably going to play bad. There's plenty of free engines. Everything you need to get is free. I haven't spent a single money, or a single dollar <laughs> um, on any of this learning process. It's just a lot of time and a lot of concentration. Find an engine. Don't build your own. Learn a language. Don't build your own. And build your own game.